Yeah, I, I think through the early summer months, my guess is we will retest those October lows. But I think, again, you know, the the recession that everyone's talking about will eventually hit. But my guess is likely in the second half. So kind of late summer, fall, maybe into the into the kind of November, December period. And so I think that the markets are going to be kind of on the on the kind of the cusp of wondering what's the Fed going to do. Right. Because the right. positive of a recession is the Fed stops hiking and maybe cuts. But the negative of a recession is lower earnings for stocks and, and maybe a troublesome um, recession that we can't get out of very easily unless the Fed comes to the rescue. So it's going to be one of those guessing games, I think, over the next you know three to four months. And then I do think that ultimately it becomes a very bearish scenario for the overall equity markets and really, to be honest, all risk assets. U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, Chairman Gary Gensler has detailed why he considers all crypto tokens other than Bitcoin as securities. While acknowledging that crypto tokens may have different setups, he stressed that, at the core, these tokens are securities. Hello and welcome to Crypto Street. In today's video, founder and chief market strategist at InTheMoneyStocks.com and Verified Crypto Investing. Gareth Soloway updates about Bitcoin's current market standing, the final bottom in crypto, and his outlook for Bitcoin in 2023. I really am. And again, I think we're seeing more and more signals of this where, you know, you're getting certain data points like like jobs to stay strong, but then you have other job, other kind of um, economic data points that are becoming very, very weak. And I think ultimately the jobs will weaken, but it's keeping the Fed tighter for longer. And that's actually going to be very problematic over the next 12 to 18 months. So I think I think you're going to get in this very serious pickle for this economy. Um, and I think you're going to see a lot of fear coming in later in the year and into 2024. Yeah. yeah, so I do think that we're going to see some downside in Bitcoin here. And we've already seen a little bit of a pullback off the tw uh, 25,000 marker. But let's take a look at the chart and see what we have in store here. So if we look at the chart of Bitcoin, we can see that the recent highs mirror the high pivot from the August period, right? So it makes a lot of sense why that was going to be a pivot resistance point. And so what we can do is we can basically take a trend line, put it right at that high, and it's the highest point going back to when we made the uh, the cycle lows on Bitcoin here, and that's where we stopped out. Now, what we're seeing here is actually a little bit of a channel being developed. And again, channels are really handy for kind of giving us highs and lows. So what we can do is we can connect these lows here, and we drag that trend line up, and then we notice that that matches the highs on Bitcoin as well from here to right here. So so what this tells me is that you have a lot of resistance around 25,000, 25,300, but then your technical support is around 22,300. So my guess is we'll retest 22,300. The big question then becomes, do we break that level? I am in the camp that eventually we do break that level and we trade back to about the 18,000 um 400 level, which was the midpoint here of this kind of W pattern bottom. So again, I, I am in the camp that we will see some trouble for the economy here over the next, um, you know, the next, at least in Bitcoin and, and the stock market, the next few months, I do think a retest of the October lows, which then brings Bitcoin back to about 18,400. Gensler believes that the securities watchdog has all of the legal tools needed to oversee the crypto sector. The publication conveyed, adding that the SEC boss explained that pretty much every sort of crypto transaction already falls under the SEC's jurisdiction, except spot transactions in Bitcoin itself and the actual purchase or sale of goods or services with cryptocurrencies. The SEC chairman was quoted as saying, everything other than Bitcoin. You can find a website, you can find a group of entrepreneurs, they might set up their legal entities in a tax haven offshore, they might have a foundation. They might lawyer it up to try to arbitrage and make it hard jurisdictionally or so forth. I do think so. I think that, again, the social media in the world has really bought, brought to the forefront. And that's why you see this under 40 crowd, right? Once you get to the 50s and the 60-year-olds, it's not quite as influenced by social media. But there's so much on social media about the demise of fiat currencies, which which rightly so. I mean, when you see what the governments are doing around the globe, but it is really pushing younger investors to say, listen, I don't know about stocks. Is it a rigged game? Where is it not rigged? Well, the right now, the feeling is that it's more these cryptocurrencies and the investing class of this new generation right. is absolutely looking at this as a new new place to put money. Yeah, so I do think China's trying to front run a little bit here, right? I mean, they're very aware that they have a, a kind of a, a 
class of people there that are going to be the next big consuming public, right? And they're already starting to get there. So what they need to do is nurture it. How do you nurture it? You you inject liquidity, you keep things from getting too bad, where people run away and get scared. And and so I think, you know, not only did you have the pandemic that caused issues there, but then you also have their their real estate markets, which are just in shambles as well. So they have to do this injection, not only to kind of save the economy, but also to continue to nurture that growing middle class, which they view. And again, you know, this has been documented, but you you have China saying, listen, we want to have an economy like the US where the consumer, our own citizens are the driving force. We don't want to be reliant on the US. And if we do something that annoys them, they can slap tariffs and all of a sudden it creates problems here. So I really think that that's what's behind this. And they are kind of front running the the next move in, in, in liquidity. Absolutely. They might drop their tokens overseas at first and contend or pretend that it's going to take six months before they come back to the U.S., Gensler continued, without naming specific cryptocurrencies. He emphasized, but at the core, these tokens are securities because there's a group in the middle, and the public is anticipating profits based on that group. Following Gensler's claim that all crypto tokens other than BTC are securities, a number of people took to social media to disagree with the SEC chief. Lawyer Jake Chervinsky tweeted, Chair Gensler may have prejudged that every digital asset aside from Bitcoin is a security, but his opinion is not the law. Yeah, so so I assume you mean uh, resistance, right? So we're looking at price right, right now, trading at yeah, 23,500. Yeah. So I think that's what we're watching here, right? So, so you're absolutely correct is that you're getting this consolidation in the charts. And that does seem to be a pivot point. And the reason it's a pivot point is that if we look at the daily chart, and I can throw my chart up again here to take a look. Yep is we clearly see that this area here, that first kind of little topping area, that's right at 23.8. And so the idea here is that if you can recapture that high, it starts to tip the scales towards the more bullish side. Now, again, if we put that trend line in here, right at 23.8, you can see right now we are just below it, but you could be putting in a little bit of consolidation that could be setting up for another move to the upside. So this is kind of one of those scenarios where as a trader, I sit back and I watch because I'm not good enough to kind of determine which direction it's going to go. But it will be interesting. And I agree that if we get back above 23.8 and it can stay there, let's first say for 24 hours, it then increases the probability of us making a move up again and retesting the 25,000 level. Now, if we can't get above 23.8, we, it goes to the scenario that I just talked about prior, which right. is where you have to start looking at this 22,300 area on the chart. Yeah, so at least in the short term, we're kind of stuck in the same kind of parallel channel that we're seeing in the uh, the Bitcoin chart. And what I mean by that is if we kind of draw a trend line like this, we can bring this down here as well and notice that we're trending sideways to slightly up. Now, the one thing I think is a positive here in the near term, and this is just talking over the next few days to a week or so, is that we had this strong move up where we tested the high, and now you are consolidating. So there is a chance that we could make another attempt, just like with Bitcoin, at the recent highs. If we do that and we can puncture it, you then have the possibility of going up and retesting that 2000 level. Now, interestingly enough, the 2000 level was the highest point on Ethereum since the, the lows were put in, right? And that's right. going back to basically August of 2022. Interestingly enough, Bitcoin has already tested that high uh, from that point. Now, granted, Ethereum made a much bigger percentage move, but it'd be interesting to see if Ethereum still needs to test that level before there's any chance of a corrective move mm -hmm. since Bitcoin already did do it. So it is something I'm watching. I would be, based on the current chart in the very near term, I would be slightly bullish on, um, on Ethereum here just over the next few days. And I think, I think again, with crypto, the, the key is this, is right, the further away from FTX we get, and the, the the less there's new FTX scenarios, right, where you scare the market and you worry, people start worrying about, you know, their their money and their, their exchange accounts and so forth. I think the further away we get, the better it is for crypto, right? Now, the big headwind is going to be when are we going to get the judge's decision on Ripple? When are we going to get the regulation on crypto and find out exactly what it is? I mean, that's kind of the dark gray area here in the cryptocurrency markets. But I think investors are gaining you know, at least the retail crowd is gaining more and more stamina to be back in this market after they really got scared when FTX collapsed.
So I, I think right right around that bounce, the bounce with anger is kind of where I'm leaning towards where we are, that kind of orangish, yellow, or yeah, exactly right there. So I still think it's going to fade. And I, you know, I'm still in the camp that, you know, as of now, I haven't seen enough signals to make a call that the lows are in. But again, you know, when you're trading at 16, 15,000, I don't think there's that much more to go to the downside. I mean, maybe 12 to 13, maybe worst case scenario, nine. But for sure, we're in that anger area, right? I mean, I think FTX really was one of those scenarios where investors were like, what the heck? You know, this is messed up that people are, you know, basically lying to our face and just taking money and, and running. So so I do think that we're close. Um, I still think it could take another six to 12 months for it to bottom out. But but I think that, again, the downside is somewhat limited when you look at the bigger move from 69,000 all the way down to 15.7 or so. So what are your thoughts about Gareth Soloway's prediction? Tell us in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon with the next video. Thank you so much for watching.